at the end of what's we're in early 24, at the end of 22, we found ourselves like a lot of product companies where we, during the pandemic, we couldn't get a bunch of inventory. And so we ended up overbuying and we ended up with too much inventory at the end of 2022. Mm -hmm. Now, this is an inline product of stuff that we can sell continuously in operations, throws up this red flag. We have a bunch of extra product on hand. Now, then product is like, okay, let's do some less limited drops this year so we can sell the stuff we have. Marketing's like, okay, we're going to market the product that we have the most of so that we can, you know, make this whole thing work together, right? So operations, mm -hmm. you know, announcing it to the team, uh, product adjusting, marketing adjusting, all of our amazing people making it work. All of these things have to happen together. Another quick example, operations, we are moving to a 3PL and realizing like, okay, as you transfer to a 3PL, there's any number of things. We got to we gotta pause on doing as many drops at, at this point. And also, you know, like, so we'll do wild comp product. Like we just give you, like we'll be like, all right, you buy this, you get a free monocle. Like, hey, <laughs> for the next X amount of time, we need to pause on that stuff while we're transitioning our, uh, our third party logistics. And that's what you do. You work together, right? You're all in this together. And that's the beauty mm -hmm. of when you kind of like, when you make all of them the focus and you all start uh, moving your legs together, you become a cheetah. Welcome to the Culture Gooder podcast, a behind the shades look at creating and changing culture inside of Gooder sunglasses. Welcome listeners to the Culture Gooder podcast. I'm Stephen Lees. Uh, alongside me here is Sean Tinney. And we're in the middle of a series on the on our brand directive. If you haven't, please go back to episode 85 and take a listen for context. But our brand directive is made up of four distinct articles. Our ethos, that's aspirational. That's why we exist. Our playbook, that's actionable. That's how we act. Our anchors, that's foundational. Those are the things we need to succeed. And sunglasses, that's the tangible. That's the thing we sell to make money. And today we are talking about our anchors. This is the foundation. We have four of them, product, marketing, people, operations, we need all four of these things uh, working for us to thrive, and they're core to our business. Sean, let's talk about it. Yeah, so as we kind of move through the golden circle, the why, how, the what, right, working our way towards sunglasses, um, anchors is the second part of our how, and and I think it's really cool that, you know, people are part of all this, but we do have these four um, anchors, product, marketing, people, and ops. Um, and that reflects probably the way that a lot of companies are structured in one way or another. So as we dive into each of these, um, we're going to look at different things, some goals, cheat codes, and KPIs uh, that make each of those shine. So let's start with product and just jump in there. So how do you think about product as foundational to Gooder? Yeah, I think uh, for our listeners out there, you know, as a reminder, we define anchors as the four sectors of a brand that hold us in place that we use to base decisions on. And right, so they anchor us down. I think the best visual is their legs. We're a quadruped. They all four need to be moving together. And product, you know, being that we're a product company, we sell sunglasses. It was the one that was identified the first. It was the reason for starting the brand. You know, we thought running was fun. Your gear should be too. And from the beginning... Uh, whether you sell a hard good like we do or you sell a service or a software, everybody has a product, uh, usually the product service that they sell. And I think it's really understanding the why and the ethos and that stuff is critically important. And it's why we create connection with our customers and, and, and why this brand is so powerful. But at our core, it is important to understand we do make and sell sunglasses. And so, yeah, I think that it's one of those really interesting things that we've done it so much and we launch so much product that it's something that it's not the juicy thing that's new, but it's, you know, yeah, I guess maybe the most important from a, uh, <laughs> uh, a you know, a well-being of the company standpoint. Continuing to exist. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, continuing to exist. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so so the goal uh, is to make products that our customers effing love, right? And you you can uh, maybe quickly touch on the the effing part, just so we can ground people in that. Yeah, I think we'll probably do an entire episode on product and customers, but you know our product early in two thousand, our first model was the OG. We launched that in two thousand fifteen. It was our first sunglass. It was a smash hit, and then 
in uh, end of 2017, we were making our second model called the BFG, and uh, you know, it stands for big fucking gooders. But and we were doing it. My co-founders and I were really scared to death of being a one-hit wonder, and so we kind of deconstructed and we reverse engineered why was the OG so successful, and we identified the four Fs. Um, it's fun, it's fashionable, it's functional, meaning it's made for an athlete, and it's affordable. Uh, and so we it, we created the four Fs as a decision matrix for how we make product, right? Fun, uh, wild colors, fun names, fashionable, you can wear them uh, to a happy hour or a workout, functional, no slip, no bounce, they're made for the active lifestyle, uh, affordable, we, you know, $25, $35 price point. And then... When uh, in two, uh, 2021 and in 2022, we actually started to realize like, oh, our customers usually fit one, two, three, or four of the S. They're the fun customer. They, they want escapism. They're the uh, fashionable cons- customer. They like individuality and looking great. They're the functional customer. Like they're hardcore active or uh, they're, they love our affordability. Sometimes they're all four. And for our product, so we we make product for our customers. So, right, it's the four Fs for the four Fs customers, and that's how they're connected. So we make product that our customers effing love. It is the core part of our business. It's why everybody at Gooder gets a paycheck and why we are here. <laughs> so in any business, uh, there's KPIs, right? We track the health of a company, the sales of a product, things like that. Um, for each of our anchors, we've assigned some KPIs that um, are important to to understand, you know, is this going well? How do we need to change things? So can you talk through some of the KPIs we think about with product um, and the insights that we're looking to gain from those? Yeah, right. I think the the four Fs is the biggest cheat code. And then from, pro, from a KPI standpoint, we margin is really important, right? Like uh, the profit we make on our product and we need to be able to make a profit and charge um, uh, an affordable price. So that is a very important metric we look at. From our limited standpoint, you know, we have about 100 inline SKUs and then we do these like wild drops all the time, you know, Easter, Goldschlager, whatever. And so those, the goal is to sell out as quickly as possible because once uh, July 4th passes, you don't want any July 4th classes. So that's it. Like that's a KPI there. And then, you know, one thing that's actually just core is our ability to hit due dates, right? Our ability to hit the due date and... And that's really, really important. Sometimes the product is a hit, sometimes it's not. And and I think that those are kind of the three KPIs that we look at to determine our success. And the sellout thing is really a really important one because over time we've realized, you realize, man, you'd much rather buy small and sell out fast than buy large, sell a couple hundred or thousand unit extra units, but have extra left over. And so we identified that as a very important um, uh, KPI. So it's, it is buying appropriately is wrapped up in selling out of limiteds. Yeah. Awesome. Any other cheat codes when it comes to product? No, I mean, I think the important thing as we kind of go through product marketing people operations is each one of these um we define we have goals we have cheat codes kpis we have supporting behaviors we have rituals um we we try to challenge the status quo and so i think product we'll do an entire episode on the product and customer so we can move off of it but it's just it's important Mm -hmm. if you think about the core anchors of your business i encourage everybody to go through and define the areas that make it up and make sure you're paying the appropriate attention to it yeah well said all right. Well, so the next thing uh, that flows naturally from product is marketing, right? You've got to get the, the, the people to the product somehow. So uh, talk through the foundational anchor of marketing for us. Right. I think, you know, marketing, it's how we find uh, and connect with our effing customers. So the fun, fashionable, functional, affordable customer is, is really important, right? We want to find the right customer for the right product. And from the beginning, we always kind of use this word create connection, and I think that's mm-hmm. just a very important way to look at it. Instead of selling, we're trying to create a connection and we believe that the sell would come. And that's how we've always approached it. We've done great campaigns. We've done not so great. You know, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> the cheat code, right? The four Fs is very important. So we market to the same people. Also, we now have a very powerful brand. We have this like um, 
irreverent, absurd uh, cheat code that we use inside of, of our content for marketing. And then another really important thing that's, that is really a function of marketing is like our ability to, the price point is awesome uh, from mm-hmm. over, you know, $20 actually has sunglasses to anyone. But as it goes down, they, 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 you know, those are cheat codes, but KPIs, man, are our conversion rate in our website, critically important KPI, our ROAS, so that's return on ad spend, critically important mm-hmm. KPI. These are just things that we use. We don't, we're not a slave to them, but we use to determine are we on the right track. Yeah, so one thing that um, I've heard you do really well is explain um, what an insight is. <laughs> like what when someone's talking about a number, you want them to offer an insight. Can you give a little bit of perspective on what that is and isn't and how people can think about that when they're looking at numbers uh, within their own roles? Man, insight is one of the hardest things, I think, for people to grasp. And, you know, so the ability to really understand something and then act with intuition. And Mm -hmm. I think that that is... It's just, it's a difficult, it's a nuanced thing. And, and I think the really understand is important. So you really need to understand. Most of us think that, you know, you, you think the problem is Y. And uh, and the problem is R. You've missed S, T, U, V, W, and X. And if you have a ton of insight, you understand and you kind of go really into what's going on. I, you know, a tactical example in the... Uh, marketing world would be for us if we like like everybody loves our brand they talk about it they're so obsessed with it i think we start charging a hundred dollars for our sunglasses you have missed the entire point you're not (laughs) thinking right you're 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 jumping to a quick conclusion about understanding the full picture of the four f's and and what we do um you know on the on the other side of it we so that's a okay that's not not a a great insight uh a good insight when we were developing our product it you some people do not like and some people inside this building didn't like the idea of like hey 25 dollar active sunglasses to anyone they're like oh well that cheapens the brands like we're an affordable brand i don't understand <laughs> what you don't understand about that and, but if you understand our customer and one reason that we are attractive to them and how much they love it, you're able to sit, lead with something like a $25 active eyewear for anyone that makes you feel uncomfortable because you you understand it and then you could act from a place uh, of understanding and intuition. So I hope I explained that correctly, mm-hmm. but it's just, it's a really nuanced concept that I don't think most people understand completely or put into practice to level up. Mm-hmm. And there's also sort of like a, you know, reporting the weather kind of thing, right? Like this is just, these are what the numbers are. And there, but there's always more to, well, what led to them being that way and what would lead to them changing if we were trying to change them. Yeah, exactly. And I think the um, bad news is no time and no options. And so when you're tracking Mm -hmm. on stuff regularly, you know, you're like, okay, oh, it's not going where it needs to be, so let's adjust accordingly. And I think that's the important thing of having KPIs is you're not determining your value. You are actually using it to uh, pick up patterns and recognize when you're doing something really great or when you need to change course. Mm-hmm. And that speaks to one of marketing's behaviors, key behaviors, right, which is aligning on strategy before execution, like making sure are we just reacting to something here or is it aligning with our strategy? Yeah, and you know, and we've we've made missteps where, right, our our content from the beginning, we realized all the content out there was lame, safe, and predictable. We we made ours absurd, irreverent, and stuff that stands out. But there have been times when it's actually been too absurd, where you're like, is this a sunglass company or is this a razor company? If somebody <laughs> right. shaving their legs, riding a bike, you know. And so, <laughs> also, that there's that piece of it of of us realizing, it, you know, we've also. Uh, learn the hard way uh l- learn the hard way but you know so supporting we we, we want to stand out and also we want to make sure we speak people need to understand we're a sunglass brand and so that is uh you know you gotta you just gotta walk that line right yeah exactly awesome uh anything else you want to cover our marketing before we jump to people 
I mean, I think this what's really important is depend marketing. We 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 launch products like crazy. Every time we launch a product, we have to do new creative for it. We have to do photo shoots. We have to post it on our website. You know, then we have these giant large scale campaigns. And so, man, the ability to understand your product and then market the right product to the right people is very very fundamental. They should be connected at the hip, always. <laughs> Yeah, and that speaks to the the shifts we've made in aligning our marketing teams so that they could be uh, focused on those same things together, right? Yeah, for sure. And I think, you know, I've been talking about uh, stuff of like, all right, you know, product, marketing, people, operations. Actually, it's, if you were to really talk about in order, it's like we make product, we, it, it, we the next one we should talk about is operations. We should, we should be talking about people last because it is like we make product <laughs> for our customers, we market um, you know, we market, we use marketing to find the right customers to buy the right product. We use operations to make that product and ship it back to the customers. And then the people mm -hmm. make it all work. And right. so marketing product, uh, operations, they all need to be con interconnected and understand, uh, what the other is doing to thrive. Mm hmm yeah, so this is where insights and KPIs start to really connect. So there are dots to connect between teams, right? And there's there's a shared understanding of what might need to shift uh, for each team in, in response to something or in anticipation of uh, creating certain change. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell one, one and a half stories that kind of blend together. But at the end of what's we're in early 24, at the end of 22, we found ourselves like a lot of product companies where we, during the pandemic, we couldn't get a bunch of inventory. And so we ended up overbuying and we ended up with too much inventory at the end of 2022. Mm -hmm. Now, this is an inline product of stuff that we can sell continuously in operations, throws up this red flag. We have a bunch of extra product on hand. Now, then product is like, okay, let's do some less limited drops this year so we can sell the stuff we have. Marketing is like, okay, we're going to market the product that we have the most of so that we can, you know, make this whole thing work together, right? So operations, mm -hmm. you know, announcing it to the team, uh, product adjusting, marketing adjusting, all of our amazing people making it work. All of these things have to happen together. Another quick example operations we are moving to a 3pl and realizing like okay as you transfer to a 3pl there's any number of things we gotta we gotta pause on doing as many drops at, at this point and also you know why like, so we'll do wild comp product like we just give you like we'll be like all right you buy this you get a free monocle like hey <laughs> for the next x amount of time we need to pause on that stuff while we're transitioning our uh our third-party logistics and that's what you do. You work together, right? You're all in this together. And that's the beauty mm -hmm. of when you kind of like, when you make all of them the focus and you all start uh, moving your legs together, you become a cheetah. Quadruped. <laughs> right. Exactly. Well, that's a great example of like uh, the whole bad news is no time, no options thing, right? If, if ops goes, hey, we've got a whole, we're overstocked on inventory, but we feel like this is bad news. We don't want to say anything. Um then marketing spends all the the budget they could have used to to help them out there. Um, now it's actually bad news because we're out of time, we're out of options. But if when everyone's speaking to each other, even if it feels like maybe not the best thing to report on, everybody can adjust and things turn out fine. Yeah, I completely. And uh, you know, at the end of the day, we're just we're all in this together. And I think the more I think the the thing that people need to understand is. At Gooder, we all touch product, we all touch marketing, we all touch ops, we're all people. These are all interconnected always. They're, and, and I think once you understand that and you communicate that, you just create um, a world where there's uh, less Spider-Man memes of people pointing and more <laughs> of people, you know, drawing uh, game plans in the sand to score. You know, we're all on the same team, yeah. passing the same ball, working towards the same goal. <laughs> exactly. Uh, any other sort of cheat codes or KPIs in ops you want to cover here? I mean, we always make the goal accuracy, right? Like you don't want to under project or over project. We, I think being within plus or minus 5%, whether it's, uh, you know, sales targeting, whether it's uh, purchasing, that is make the goal accuracy not being, not being under 
is a really important KPI that we we look at. You know, obviously we look at like you know customer service, service information from product quality, but yeah, I think that accuracy thing is really really fundamental to our success. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely, and you know that's something that has taken multiple passes to get to to kind of reduce the variance there, right? It's a lot of um, variability at first, but then with time and practice, it gets more and more accurate. Completely. Yeah. So one thing uh, that we were kind of mentioning a couple episodes back was just this idea that, you know, when you're starting a company, you, you're doing everything you can to make this product. And then you're doing everything you can to get it in people's hands and kind of grow the marketing. Operations was always an anchor, but it kind of started out with just a couple people doing their best and it's grown since into a very robust team. So just wanted to give you a chance to, to tell, share a bit of that story and um, kind of how that's grown for us over time. Yeah, I think the thing that's important is there's actually always been quite a bit of people doing it. Just the thinking about it in a different way and calling attention to it is probably the mm-hmm. big shift. It's not, you know, we have like a, uh, I, I, I just think that's a really important thing. I think also in this world of we're all doing the same thing, like with a line of where product begins and operations ends is very blurry and that's okay. And mm-hmm. I think we just thought about a lot more operations functions as products. So I, I think there's a, there's a lot of that. But I think the most important thing is in 2021, we realized we were having a trouble scaling. We were investing in the operations side of the business and we set an intention and we basically quadrupled the staff on that, that maybe more there. And I think the important thing of setting intention, investing and getting the right people in the right job does when you hire, hire experts to do uh hire really smart people to know what they're doing, really incredible things happen. Yes, agreed. <laughs> yeah. So speaking of uh, smart people who know what they're doing, um, let's wrap out on the the people side of things here. What, uh, what stands out to you there? I mean, what stands out is we've done 84 episodes before the brand directive on pretty much most everything people. <laughs> and, and so, I mean, in a really fun way, you know, I think the goal, I think the thing that stands out is the goal for our people team and hiring and learning development and HR is we want the fewest amount of people coached to the highest level. And that's mm-hmm. really important to think about. We use a metric called profit per employee that helps us ensure that. But what's really funny here is we've just done 84 episodes on a, a lot of people things. And where I'm like, yeah. well, I think we could just actually end this episode because, you know, we've <laughs> talked about TWC and we've talked about AMP and any number of, of things that are very critically important to our business. And I think the, the thing that I realized when like doing the talk of like, Hey, Mark, you know, marketing product people are our culture. Marketing people are our culture. Operation people are our culture and people, people are our culture. And, mm-hmm. you know, People, that's the one thing that we all have in common is we are people. And so I think that, you know, that's the that's the thing I'll flag. So critically important. It's my favorite thing about running a successful company is the people side of it. Uh, and also, uh, I want to hire more people. So we want to have, you know, successful <laughs> marketing uh, operations and product. Right, for sure. Well, as one of the people who gets to contribute to this awesome company, I think um, what Gooder has done well under your leadership has creating a space where we can all have fun, celebrate the work over the results, and be authentically ourselves. There's no uh, work Sean and home Sean. It's just Sean, Sean. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and that's something that, that does take a lot of work, like to create that kind of space where, where we can learn from each other, admit our mistakes, learn to communicate better, um, and just do our best at all times, even when our best isn't perfect, right? Yeah, 100%. And the people do really make it all work. It's very fundamentally important. We have amazing people here, and it is an absolute gift to be able to be part of cultivating this culture. Agreed. (laughs) Fantastic. Well, we've hit all the anchors pretty solidly. Uh, Anything in general that you want to circle back on for this one? No, I'm great. Uh, It's a... I'm all good. Right on. Well, thank you so much, Stephen. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Our next episode, we're going to dive deep into the product side of things, our sunglasses. Until then, be excellent to each other.